Okay. So, let's paint up one of the showgirls from the Colette box. So, let's see here. There she is. Now, I've already done a little bit of work on her, so you can see I've laid in the purple, um, kind of mapped out the black a little bit. Um, we're going to do all kinds of stuff, but there you can kind of see the beginnings of it. Uh, I haven't decided what I'm going to do yet with the feathers, um, but we can play with that some more in a little bit. Um, the exposure on that camera. I wonder if I can fix that real quick. Uh, so give me just a second. We'll get that set up. You guys can see me. This is this is really exciting stuff here. So shooting mode now. I'll go to setup. All right, let's see how that goes. Um, all right, so I am going to, let's see, let's do, let's work on the skin a little bit. Um, yeah, or do we want to work the purple? Let's work the purple a little bit. Um, so let's start off with, uh, Citadel this time. We're going to do uh, Xerxes Purple. I kind of like the Citadel pur uh, Purples. So give it a shake, shake, shake. Get a... Do an Army Painter brush. So I'm going to use the uh, War Game... Uh, what is it? Uh, the War Gamer Regiment brush. Get some of that on the palette. And because my brush was wet, it's already thinned about where I want it to anyway. Then we put on the old man glasses. And let's get started. Alright, so we'll just do a kind of a base layer here of that purple. I'm going to leave the dark purple that I did. I You see I already washed it, kind of. Uh, we're going to leave that there in place. Basically, you're just going to do a thin glaze of this purple. A little bit, a little bit heavier than just a glaze, but... So I can't really see who joined. Someone say hello in the chat for me. Let's see who's here. So this is a commission. Um, those of you that listen to the podcast know I'm not a huge fan of the Arcanist, but when someone presented me the opportunity to paint this box, uh, I couldn't pass it up. Um, I think the sculpts on this new Colette box are some of the best I think that Weird has put out yet. Um, so as soon as it was offered. And uh, hey, Wookie Gunner, how are you? Um... So just a thin base coat of this purple. Now one thing that's nice about this skirt is this is going to be a relatively easy um, to really kind of, you see how the sculpt is really uh, perfect here. So we're going to do some real extreme clothing highlights I think on here um, is the way direction I'm going to go with this. And then maybe after we get a few layers on here, maybe we'll move to finish off our skin. Because usually I paint inside out. Uh, so I'll start painting the skin. Because that's the innermost layer, I guess, if you think of a model as being layered um, all the way up. 
So I'll uh, paint the skin, then paint the next layer out, and the next layer out. Um, I kind of just base coated because I wasn't sure what colors I wanted to use with her. Um, so this is what I decided to do, is just kind of lay out some colors. And now I've got this purple handy, so let's do the purple. Um, we're going to do the dress and the shoes the same purple, but I'll do those later. Let's focus just on the dress here. So there, we've got the base coat down. Now, let's take our next layer up. So clean our brush off. And next layer up, we're going to go with some Army Painter. We're going to do Alien Purple from Army Painter. It's a nice, you can see, a nice kind of bright purple. Hey, Werewolf Comics, how are you? Well, you know what? That werewolf purple is about identical to that zero. So let's do this. Let's mix that in with my next color up. So that's what we're going to do now is we're going to take some of this lilac from uh, Citadel and let's mix that in. I didn't realize how close those two were to each other. So you can see on my palette here, I'm kind of creating a, a nice gradient for me to work with. And a little bit more of a pure color. There we go. That should allow me to get some really nice blends. And we're gonna go to, let's do a, Artist Opus, another favorite brush of mine. This is their double zero. Let's start layering this puppy in. Right. Start on the back. Let me thin this down just a little bit. Add a little bit of water to it. There we go. All right. So obviously the center of each one of these is where the highest highlights are going to be. So let's just sketch it out where we're going to have our highest highlights. And then we'll do the blending of those highlights later. First we've got to figure out where they're going to be. see because of how much I've got it thinned it's going to take a layer or two to get that coverage that's all right kind of a second highlight there So very simple, just laying out where I'm going to have the highlights. So, so establishing what the contrast is right out of the gate, and then worry about blending it afterwards. The reason I do that is I find it easier to keep the contrast that I want by establishing a high contrast right from the beginning. Move to the front. Just got little ruffles up here.
All right. So there, you can kind of see where I've kind of laid out where I want those highlights to be. Again, not concerned about blending them at all. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back with the base purple that I've been working with. A little bit of water there. Let's get that thinned down a little bit. And I want to add a couple more layers of this base purple because as I'm going through this, you can see some of the, opa the opacity is not exactly where I want it to be um, on the darker stuff. So let's go back and let's shade in the dark areas again. That's my ESPN alert. Heck of a thing today with the uh, NBA. Canceling uh, games and as part of their kind of a boycott protest. That was something else. I'm not a big follower of the NBA. I'm more of a college sports guy, but... Uh, All right, so now let's worry about the blend. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is get a smaller brush. So we're going to go now with what has become my tried and true brush, the 2-0 from Redgrass. Um, I've been using this same brush for several months now. It has kept its point. Um, I love how the paint comes off of it. Um, Redgrass is really, they're the ones that make my palette as well. Um, they are putting out some really good stuff. Very impressed with them as of late. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is basically we're going to glaze down these transitions. So I'm getting nice and thin coverage here. And we'll test it on my thumb, on my thumbnail, to kind of see that's about where I want it to be. And now what we're going to do is effectively try to erase the harshness of those transitions that are there. Let's see how well that works. So I'm essentially going to run on both sides with this thin down paint. And hopefully, what that will do is we'll start to see that transition get less harsh as we go. So step one is to establish where I want the highlights to be. And then just start glazing it down and making the transition smoother and more blended with each other. And this is how I have had the high, most success getting some nice smooth transitions. There are faster ways than this. Um, you know, just doing strip layering um, is much faster than this technique. Um, this is how I like to do it. So. I'm going to keep working those transitions. It's almost like magic. What will happen is the harshness of those transitions will slowly dissipate. I've just got to make sure I keep the paint thin. Slowly just work those transitions until they kind of disappear on me and get nice and blended. This is really a great sculpt. If you are uh, want to practice cloth and practice highlighting and blending, a sculpt like this that's got you know just great, great areas like that. Um, like, this is a perfect thing to practice on. Um, all 
So again, all we're doing now is we're just glazing down those transitions, making them a little less harsh. All I'm doing is I'm using a glaze to hit where the highlight that I painted and the base coat where they connect with each other. And when I'm painting it, I'm doing a little bit on the highlight and a little bit on the base coat. There, you can see that those highlights are really starting to smooth out. Not nearly as harsh as they were before. I'm going to be able to bring them up another step or two here in a second. Let's just quickly do the rest of these sides. front area and I'm gonna go real bright up on this front area when I get to it there's much tighter tighter and smaller so uh, not not as concerned about there being a smooth transition um, there's just not enough space to have a super smooth transition there all right so I'm almost there just kind of doing a check all right, there we go. So now let's go back and let's make sure that we haven't overdone it. So we're going to go back and let's bring up the center of this. Each of these highlights with our bright color again, but a much thinner line. And always remember, there's two ways to get contrast. You can do it by bringing up your highlights and bringing down your shades. So I might actually shade in these creases a little bit more to make sure I've got some nice contrast too. Let's see how far up we can bring this. I oh, appreciate it, Wolf. Uh, Werewolf, I'll do my best to try to keep in there. I got myself a monitor um, that I can look up to, which helps. But sometimes I get so involved in painting that I don't pay attention. Still getting used to this. Alright, so you can see... Just thin little lines to bring back those highlights up again. And what's nice is that I've kept this paint nice and thin so I can do multiple layers of this glaze to even bring up kind of mini highlights. Uh, am I ready for the game on Sunday? The answer is no, I am not ready for the game on Sunday. So this coming Sunday, I am playing Arcanus uh, as a promise kept to my patrons. Um, people that listen to the podcast know that I joke about how I hate the Arcanus, and we set a goal on Patreon, and my patrons are awesome, and they blew through that goal. And soon after that, COVID lockdown started. Um, we now have protocols in place here on the third floor where I feel comfortable having people come and play. Um, and keep in mind when we stream a game, 
it takes several people uh, to be on the third floor. There's the two players, the host, who Ray is going to be hosting uh, this time. Normally I host these matches. And then we've got cameramen, we've got production people, people monitoring the chat. Um, that's a whole to-do, ta-da. So there we go. Some nice contrast there. Relatively smooth. All right, let's see if we can't push it even a little bit farther up. So I'm going to go one step higher here from this lilac. And let's actually work in some pink. So I'm going to take uh, this fulgrim pink and add that. See what that looks like. Alright, so now we're really going to push that contrast up with a little touch of this pink. It's going to be small. kind of on the center here. So now let's bring the darks down a little bit on there. So, grab a green to mix in with the purple. A little dark green. Let's see what I got here. Oh, let's take this Calavan. So, now take some of this Calavan green, mix it in with that purple. And that should create a nice dark gray for me. That I can shade with. Uh, a little bit too much. So let's put a little bit more purple in there. reason I picked green is it's the opposite color on the color wheel. Um, so what that'll do is that'll cre create a nice little shade for me. So let's bring in, and it's a shade that's a lot more interesting than just going gray. Uh, the petticoat, we're going to do the same, I'm going to do the same thing with the petticoat. So we're still, we're going to go with the same type of purple up to pink. Um, and then I think I'm going to go yellow trim. So the bow will be yellow with the trim around each of these, the black part of the dress and the purple part of the bus, real bright yellow. The question is, is what I'm going to do with the feathers, which I just, I really don't know what to do yet with the feathers. So, um, so now what I'm doing is I'm using this dark mix I've created, which is, again, a mix of the green, the dark green and that purple. And now what I'm going to do is use that to make these creases a little bit more intense. So I'm literally doing the exact opposite of what I was doing before, which was hitting the high points. I'm now hitting these creases to get a little bit, go a little bit darker on my darks. Mm 
Again, I'm getting that contrast. There we go. So see how that gives me a much nicer contrast. Yeah, there we go. Nice and blended too. So you can see as it's dried, we still have a lot of interest, but it is nice and blended. All right, so let's work the back of the dress here. So let's get my basic purple back. The stockings. Stockings are where things are going to get interesting. So, and I'll, I'll try to make sure I do that on the stream. And I've already got a tutorial video on my YouTube channel about how I do see-through stockings or uh, semi-translucent stockings. You see, I've already painted them black. And then what you'll see me do is glaze up to flesh where the stockings are more see-through. Um, and it gives the effect of the stockings being semi-transparent. Um, so I've got big plans for the stockings. What I want them to look like is you can see, you know, a semi-transparent uh, stocking as opposed to opaque, which is what you see now. All right, so let's work the back of this dress. base color in there. So for those of you that are following, um, did any of you guys get a chance to look at my list for Sunday? I'd be curious to know what you think of it. I actually didn't build it. I had a good buddy of mine who's an excellent Arcanist player um, build it for me. Uh, Jeremy Peace, who you've heard on the podcast before. Uh, he was just recently on Rage Quit Wire podcast talking about Arcanists. Um, really good player, but more, most importantly, just a really good guy. And... Uh, I am anxious to try it out because, boy, I'm looking at those models that are, he's got in there for me. I've got some heavy hitters. Um, it will be very interesting to see how it plays out because I'm going up against a heavy hitter with Seamus. All right, so we've got the back of that, our base purple. We've got the front, our base purple, so let's start highlighting it up. It's going to be literally the same process we went through on the main part of the dress. So I'm going to first kind of sketch in where my highlights are going to be. So we'll get the top of the breast here. That's going to be high, highlight, <laughs> highlighted. And then on her back, it'll be the upper part of her back. Will be. And again, you can see how I'm just kind of sketching it in right now. I'm not worrying about, um, not really worrying about the transitions, just like we did with the bottom part of the dress. Um, yeah, I think uh, Werewolf Comics. I think the target priority on this is uh, is going to be the challenge. I mean. Um, I've got basically just got Seamus and the Carrion Emissary that I'm most worried about um, on his list. But then those are two things to be, you know, worried about. Um, I feel like I, he has a ton of stuff to worry about on my list. Um, what's in his favor is I'm bad at Malifaux. And what also is in his favor is the fact that this will be my first Gaining Grounds 1 game. Because uh, I did not get a chance to get a gaining grounds game in, gaining ground, gaining grounds one game in before COVID. Um, so this is gonna be my first time with the schemes and uh, strats, which is scary to say the least. Um, so let's see. I'm going to 
to work on the lighting situation. Let me, what if I bring that down? Does that help? She's really, it's overexposing here, so I've got a little bit of work. To do on that camera. I apologize. I got this black background thinking it would really help things stand out and what it's doing is it's screwing with the uh, aperture on the uh, camera which sucks. Um, I don't really have a way to fix that other than just keep putting my hand behind it so I apologize. Um, Alright so let's keep pushing this contrast up. Really not a whole lot of places for highlights on this coat. We're going to, of course, hit the top of these ruffles. Do the same on the other side here. That's where the highlights are going to be. So now we're going to go through the same process that we went through before. And we're going to try to work those transitions with some thin glazes. A great, what's gray 15? Uh, Wookie. I've never heard of it. Is that a, type, a color or a brand or? Terrible idea. Zoom out. There. Maybe that'll help a little bit. 18, oh, that's like the gradient is 18% gray. Is that... I just search for something like that? Oh, okay. I will have to do some exploring them. And I like how the black makes the model stand out. I just got to get the exposure. Probably instead of having it an adjustable exposure... Um, I'm just going to have to play with the camera and get it fixed. Um, but because I like, I think it's easier to see the model with that back, but black background. Um, so I'll mess with it here in a little bit. Actually, this is annoying me. Um, give me a second, guys. I'm going to take a quick break, and I will be right back, and I will get this all fixed up.
There. I think I got it. Let's see if I bring this light. There we go. Much better. Sorry about that. I should have done that based off of my new setup before I tried anything. But that is, look at that. You can actually see the darn thing. Lesson learned. Lesson learned. All right. So let's work that uh, petticoat a little bit more. Get those transitions working. Now you see a, a lot of times when I'm painting, one of the things I do is kind of push the paint. Um, it's a term that I'd heard someone use before. And when I first started painting, it didn't make sense to me. Um, but the more I painted, the more I caught myself doing it. And it's kind of putting the paint down and then kind of pushing it while it's still on the model, pushing it up and down. And it kind of helps with those transitions. So there you can kind of see I got the transitions going there in the back. Uh, let's get these transitions under the breast. Smooth it out without losing that contrast. I'm just going to keep going back and forth until we get her. There we go. It's looking pretty good. Not too bad in the back either. So now let's bring up our higher heights. Uh, appreciate it, Wookie, for the links. Um, I will definitely check it out. All right, so let's go up a little bit higher, incorporating some of that pink. Let's see if we can't bring this up just a bit, up on the top edges here. And we're going for a real tiny highlight at the top of the breast there. We'll do the same at the very ends of our ruffles. And the very top of our coat. In the back here. So we'll go back around. The tips of our ruffles here. Alright, now I'm going to try to get this trim a nice purple. the very very top. This is going to take a little bit barely because I also want to keep the reason I'm being delicate here is I want to keep the black line that I already have there. I don't want to lose that. So there we go. There. We got some nice contrast. That's good on the purple dress. I like it. I might come back to it and do some more to it later, but for now, that'll work. Let's quickly do the shoes. It's going to be the same palette of purples. dry. What do we work on next? Um, no. 
Maybe uh, work the skin a little bit. Let's let me think about it. I think that's where I'm going to head next is the skin. Let's finish up this purple on the shoes. nothing special I'm doing on the shoes that I didn't do on the dress. Just thin layers to get a nice base coat of this Zenith purple. And we'll highlight it up. Give it a little bit of pop. So the tip of the shoe here, along the edges. All right, so let's get some flesh. Let's work the skin a little bit. So I'm gonna go grab some flesh colors. I'll be right back. work on this flesh. So we're going to start with some shading first. Here I'm going to use my old, good old friend scale color. So we'll start off here with uh, pink flesh from scale color. And if you've never used the scale colors before, uh, you just got to make sure that you shake them. They've got a very different um, medium on them. Uh, they use a gel medium as opposed to just a straight acrylic medium. It takes a little bit of getting used to. Once you do, though, uh, you fall in love. Uh, at least that's what happened to me. They are now my favorite paints. Alright. Let's get some flow improver on there. So I can use that to thin. And let's start working this skin a little bit. Uh, I'm still using that same red grass, red grass brush, the 2-0 um, from them. First, get this thinned out. Scale color comes out of the bottle pretty thick, so you really gotta, really gotta thin it. All right, let's sh start working the skin here. So areas that I'm gonna have shaded. We're going to shade right around the belly here, down under, right in the center of the stomach. And again, I'm doing the same thing I did before, which is kind of sketching in, and then we'll blend later. So there, I've got our stomach defined. We're going to have some shading under the petticoat here, so let's get that laid out. Let's go up to the cleavage. Arms.
Okay. Let's work the face a little bit. So where she's going to have some shading right under the nose. It's going to be darker. Under the eyes, obviously. Maybe a little darker. And then back of the face, under the chin, under the cheekbones. Get that all worked in. Alright. So now let's worry about the next color up. So that's the pink flesh. Well, now. I'm going to grab uh, basic flush from scale color. Add that to the palette. Same thing, set it down. Alright, let's work up some of these highlights here. So, what I'm going to end up doing is pushing back some, but not all, of that sh shading. So, I'm going to keep some of that last color exposed, but I'm going to end up pushing back some of it, trying to smooth it out without losing the contrast again. Tops of the arm here. Start highlighting off the face. So we're going to get right above the brow. Nose. Top of the cheekbones. Start to do the cleavage. Do the top of this arm. Small of her back. All right. That was a small step, but you can still I see I still got the still got some of that contrast and definition. Um, I might end up having to add a little bit of darkness to it, but let's go the next step up. So now we're going to go to light skin. This flesh set from Scale 75 is the set that I recommend when someone says, yeah, I want to try try the Scale 75, which one should I buy? Their flesh set is the, probably their best set. Um, the one to buy after their flesh set is their wood and leather set. And then you can get into the colors. Um, the other thing is their true metallics, as well as their non-metallic metal sets are also excellent. All right, so let's start using this light skin. So we're going to start defining the top brow here. Bring that nose up. Let's get the top of the cheek. Tip of the 
chin. Bottom lip. face is really starting to get some definition now. Take a quick tea break. Take a sip of tea. Um, all right. I'm going to go ahead and add my next color up too, just so we can finish this off all in one go. Uh, that is, by the way, that is the pale skin. Uh, it's a very, very light flesh. All right, let's finish working this face here. In fact, let's see if we can't zoom in. You guys can really see what I'm doing there. So this is going to be my highest highlight here. Okay. And that is just going to be a dot at the end of the nose. A little bit at the top of the brow. Thin line. Thin line under the eyes at the tip, height of the cheeks, bottom of the tip of the chin, bottom lip, and then I need to come over and get that other cheek. All right, there. that face is starting to come alive now. That's good. Uh, I need to bring down. Where her eyes are so i'm not going to do the eyes are too small to do white and do a pupil so i'm going to actually take this gray that we created and let's just darken darken that part of her eye there the deepest part Now, I also think I'm going to give her a little bit of makeup. Makeup is hard. Uh, very easy um, to mess this up. Because if you don't do it right, it looks really dumb. But I'm going to try to use some of this pink to give her kind of a purplish pink eyeshadow. Let's see if I can do it without messing things up. I need to go purple. The pink is too close to her too close to her skin tone. So let's try to go purple. It's working all right. There we go. You guys, if you can see it or not, I don't know if I'm picking up that level of detail, but that came out just fine. Now let's get a little bit of purple on her lips. Yeah, I'm happy with that face. I just need to. And I'll flush out a little bit on the side here, but her face is done. That is one thing to 
knock off. We are on a roll. All right, let's go back to highlighting the rest of the skin. So let's uh, finish her belly. bring in the next tone up here start getting some definition on the belly so it's going to be really on the inside almost like a U so here the bottom of the belly button there and the top of her hip While that dries, I'm going to hit the top of her arm here. It needs to be blended a little bit, so let's do that. here. I kind of define that out on top of that arm. Let's go back to the belly now that it's had a chance to dry. Let's bring it up just a little bit more. This is our highest high, so we're going to be real gentle with this and end up probably blending it, a lot of it back in. But let's get those highlights in there where we want them. see the belly there let's get the very high highest highs here on the side the hips let's blend that a little bit more so let's go back to our other color let's get that blended in nicely there do the extend it off to her back here Just going through and just working some of those transitions, but that's pretty good. Let's highlight that cleavage. Not a whole lot of space there. Kind of hard to see, but she's got a uh, a ribbon thing there too. So, uh, which I'm going to think I'm going to do in yellow. color load up the brush and you see now I decided to go back to the face because the now that it's dried it's not the contrast isn't as high as I wanted it to be contrast there. Those lips did not come out quite the way I wanted either. A 
Uh, could I paint her a belly ring? Yeah, theoretically I could. Um, uh, I've actually, I've got some neat ideas for the hair. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I would just, you just put a little red dot there, a little metallic there. But, yeah, you could do that. Um, right, so I want to get those, a little bit of lipstick on here, so give me just a second. Let's work those lips a little bit. Hopefully I don't screw everything up. pretty happy with that skin okay um where to next all right let me try my idea with the hair this is either going to be a great idea or a terrible idea um, let's hope that it's not terrible gonna go let's get some grays going and a white okay darker all right so I'm gonna actually start with this white Let's actually turn my palette around. And let's work on this hair. All right. Improver. Black hair can be any hair can be a challenge to make it look real. Um, so here's a hot tip for you: if you want to learn how to paint hair, the best reference photos that that exist are hair hair color ads. So ads for different hair colors um, have amazing photographs of hair. Um, so if you have not studied how light reflects on hair, that's the best way to do it is just go to Google Images and search for hair color or hair color products and take a look at the pictures. Um, and you get to really see a neat reference as to how light hits hair. All right, so here is my thought. I want part of her hair to be purple. So I need to get back on screen. I'm going to map out this part here, this part here in white. All I'm doing now is very carefully picking out part of that hair in white. And then I'm going to go back with either a purple or a pink, I'm not sure which. Um, once I finish the rest of the black hair. And 
and we'll color it. But let's first define the areas that I'm going to have colored by going white. I'm going to take it all the way to its end there. This kind of folds into here. There. I don't want to overdo it. I just want a little bit of color there. Okay, that's going to work. So I've got that mapped out. So now let's go back to blacks. Let's define, yeah, kind of like Harley, Quinn. Same kind of hair color type thing. All right. Let's define the rest of this black hair. So this is, by the way, I didn't show you, sorry. This is uh, Eclipse Gray from scale. It's a cold, cold, dark gray. strands of hair here of this darker gray keeping the back areas the creases black obviously That's a beautiful sculpt. The hair on this model is sculpted so well. You could very easily just dry brush this hair. That's how good the sculpt is. The definition on the sculpt. to bring in a little bit more flesh on the side here where her face meets the meets her hair give me just a second let me tidy that up a little bit okay all right so there we've got it first stage so we've got the darkest darks are is black and then I've kind of done a, a very dark gray to kind of get that first layer. So now we need to start playing with the light hitting. And the light hits hair in a very specific way. So I'm going to bring up a layer of gray here. This is graphite. And down and the light hits hair in kind of kind of a straight line uh, horizontally um, and the only best way for me to explain it is to is to actually paint it so we're gonna take this gray we're gonna pick out vertices so you still you can see I'm going up and down but I'm not going the entire length And if you look how black hair behaves, you'll notice that this is how light hits black hair. So I'm do the same. 
same thing down here towards the bottom. There we go. Now let's do the side of the head here. Or the back of the head, I should say. Build up that highlight there. Just gonna go all the way around. And because again, that's thin, I'm gonna it's gonna take a couple layers really make this stand out as much as I want it to. front There we go. How nice that purple skirt is. How oh, that definition is so nice. All right, so now we're gonna take some of this gray. And let's bring it up even more and create a gradient with this white. Let's really make this hair come alive. So now I'm going to go smaller verticals inside of this gray with this really light gray that I've created. All in kind of the same area. This will be the high. Highlight. Uh, 
See how that's starting to come together. Just bring in the next highlight up and we're going to go to almost white for the last highlight to really give it that hair, that shiny look, that defined look. And what's cool is even though we're doing all these grays and whites is that it's still going to look like black hair when we're done. All right, check that out. See that nice definition that we've got there? I think we've gone a little overboard on the bangs. I'll probably bring the bangs down a little bit darker again, but let's now do the final highlight, and then we'll do some cleanup. Okay. And guys, the my phone that I was monitoring the chat on died, so I'm going to have to check the chat here in a second. Uh, so I apologize if you guys have jumped in the chat and I haven't said hello or acknowledged yet, but uh, I'll jump in and look at the chat as soon as I'm done with this highest little highlight of white. Uh, so if you've got questions, I can answer them. So here I'm just doing a little dot of white to really give it that shine. That makes it look like it's hair. Luxurious hair. There, you see that? Woo! It's amazing what a little dot of white can do. To sell the illusion. Alright. And again, the best reference there is for hair is to study the advertisements for hair color. So Google image hair color. pictures on the boxes of the different hair colors it really gives you a sense of how light works with hair that's looking pretty good I am okay with that all right let's take a quick look in chat make sure I haven't missed anything um let's see here hey blue how are you um I uh, appreciate it man oh thanks I uh, appreciate just liking the hair All right, I'm gonna work. Those bangs are a little bit too too much gray for for my taste. So let's uh, bring some more black in there. So we're gonna blend that black back up and make the uh, the gray on that just a little bit less, a little bit more defined. Alright, so now 
Let's try my hair, hair color idea. So let's get this pink. And a little bit of this purple. So I'm using, by the way, I'm using um, Decala Lilac and Fulcrum Pink, two edge paints from Citadel. Let's get the hair. Let's color those strands there on her, her left ponytail, right, uh, right on our eyes. The ones, I, the part that I painted uh, white. this up a little bit. Not quite purpley enough for me. I'm going to bring in some of this darker purple and see if we can't make that look more like a purple. creates a little bit of interest. Let's see how it looks now with some yellow. So I'm going to grab some yellow because that's what I'm going to do for her, her headband and her um, uh, the ties for her ponytail. So let's grab uh, some Everland, uh, Everland Sunset. Band top there, so it's right there. Make sure my paint's coming off the brush the right way. Right there's the headband. And then the ties on the ponytail. Also going to be that yellow. Let's do the bow in yellow. The bow under her uh, ch under her chin, on her breasts, 
cleavage area. Ties in the back here. Now the ruffles edging here. The bow under her belly, so let's get that yellow. I can already see that the yellow the yellow ribbon that's on her chest is not standing out enough tonally from the color of her skin. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to almost black line that a little bit. Um, and I'll show you in a second how I'm going to do that. But I'm going to have to essentially create a separation so that the bow stands out. Continues along the back here. Be careful I don't mess up the skin. I've already got painted. Uh, okay. Slappy, slappy. Luckily, I haven't done the gloves yet. There's the base yellow for that. Let's get a little bit more so we can do some of the more edging here. So this bottom bow is going to be yellow. Trim along the bottom of her crop top dress thing is going to be yellow as well.
go. I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom of the black part of the dress. There's a little bit of trim there that's going to be yellow. It's very tiny. There's a bow in the back, I just noticed. Let's go ahead and make that yeller. Same thing on the edging on the purple, too. Exciting stuff, huh? It's like watching paint dry. <laughs> Someone's been bitten by the uh, Arcanist bug. Now, uh, somebody was commissioned to paint Arcanist. Um, so this is not for me. Uh, this is for Donald. Um, but. I am pretty pretty picky about the commissions I take just because I like painting for myself more than anything. Um, but I did not see myself buying this Colette anytime soon. And I, when I first saw the sculpts for the new Colette box, knew that I was going to have to paint it, especially the Colette sculpt. So when someone asked me if I would paint theirs for them. I gave them a price and they sent me the box. So here we are. I'm going to paint the whole box for them. And I'm looking forward to it. Because these are gorgeous sculpts. Alright. There. That yellow trim is nice. Hey Ozzy, how are you, Dag? My, little, my the phone I usually have monitoring chat, so is dead, so I'm not as quick to respond to the chats as I want. All right, we've got bows on the shoes. Let's quickly get those yellow.
let's highlight hung up that yellow still not I'm still not convinced on this on her hair color I really wanted that to be you know what I want a, a more obnoxious pink give me a second I'm gonna go with let's use this let's go with like a hot pink for her hair so I'm gonna use scale colors uh, acid pink and let's see if we can't make that hair a little bit more interesting, a little coloration in her hair. Alright. Have I not opened this yet? <laughs> Still sealed. Wow. I've not used this color yet. I think this is going to do what I was hoping. Just to really give kind of an obnoxious punk hair color. Let's see if I'm right. There we go. That's how it looked in my head. In fact, I'm going to use this on her makeup a little bit too. Do her lips in that same pink. And her eyeshadow. Yeah, did I just pick up a follow? There we go. That's what I was looking to do. Much better. Really stands out now. Uh, nice neon pink. There we go. That's what I was going for. It just didn't quite look right to me. That looks much better, much, much better. Um, all right. All right, so we need to define, I talk about the lack of definition that I have on the breast here. So on her chest, You'll notice how the yellow ribbon and her cleat, you know, her flesh under it are totally blending. So we're going to have to go in and get tricky with that. Um, I'm going to do it with a brown. So this is something that's not made anymore. 
It's Kells Magic Sauce. It's basically a wash. There's just something about the properties of it that are really funky. Um, he stopped making them. Um, I think he put the recipe out somewhere. But I loaded up on it when I found out he was going to st stop making them. Because I really like them. Uh, here's, his, here's his black. Um, huge quantities of it. So, I mean, I doubt I'll ever have to buy it again. But I'm going to try to use this to better define the space in here. And I'm going to need a really good brush. So let's go up to my tiny, tiny heavy metal brush. I'm going to talk about a brush. That's, I've used this brush probably 15 years. And it's proof that if you take care of a brush, it can last you 15 years. But what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to really define the space between the flesh and that uh, ribbon so it stands out. So I'll pick up some of that brown. Let's see if I can make that work. letting the natural propensity for this wash to want to go into this crevice. I'm just being very, very careful to have it just fall where the flesh meets it. So there, it's already a little bit better, but it's not quite dark enough. Let's mix a little bit of black in there with it. I like to darken it up just a tad. Super careful about this because I don't want it to spill all over the place, but I do want it to define. Right, that's getting there. Much better. See how that kind of stands out now on its own a little bit? It'll be better when it dries. All right, so let's uh, quickly highlight highlight up our yellows. Um, so let's go up to Flash, Flash Gets Yellow. yellow that we made it in here. Right. 
And then I'm just going in and bringing up the highlights on the yellows. Giving the, hot, giving the yellows a little bit of contrast. And depth. Gonna lie to you, I am pretty happy with how she is turning out. What is gonna make or break this model is how I do the black here and on the uh, gloves, and most importantly, how I do these stockings. If I can pull that off, I'm in good shape. I'm not worried about the uh, the feathers. I'll make the feathers look good. I've painted feathers a million times, but I gotta make sure I get the black right. Because I feel pretty darn good about the purples and the yellows. Nothing too exciting here. I'm just uh, highlighting the yellows that I already put down. Wherever the light hits, can just make it a little bit brighter. shoes there we go. and then the bow on the back here under the feathers the hidden bow that no one's gonna notice and ever look at but we want it to look good anyway Sweet. Let's do one more highlight on that white to make it stand out. I'm going to go with uh, uh, model colors Emerio Yellow, the uh, Lemon Yellow almost a white yellow I'm actually gonna mix it with a little bit of white going to give me my little pop top highlight once it 
be super important on the ribbon around her neck so I can have that contrast with the flesh and the black lining that we did. Last little highlight, the one that sells it. Normally it's just a little dot. But it's often, when you're just starting, one of the things that you don't do, which is that final highlight. My new rule of thumb is I want the contrast to make me look feel a little uncomfortable. Like I feel like I did just a little too much contrast. And usually when that happens, it means that there's enough contrast. See what I'm doing here, but I'm getting the underside of this trim under her jacket there. There we go. Let's finish the ribbon on the front. And then I'll look back in the chat here in just a second, guys. Check in on everybody as soon as we finish this highlight of the yellow. Down on the shoes. There. You can see the ribbon looks better now on her chest. It's more defined. The contrast between the black and brown lining we did uh, versus the now the very bright super highlight we did. Um, let's do the edging here because these are ruffles that are supposed to be yellow or I want to be yellow. So let's do those real quick. Together. We have almost all we got left really is the black the black um, skirt, the black gloves, and then uh, we'll do the stockings last, but uh, we have gotten a lot accomplished tonight. A lot accomplished tonight. Um, I think she looks good. 
I'm real happy that I went with that fluorescent pink on her makeup and the uh, oh, and the um, hair. Uh, it ended up being a lucky call on my part. Uh, let's take a quick peek in chat. Um, how long are we into this paint session? We are two hours in. Um, uh, I did start at the flesh, so make sure you go back. You should be able to go back and see it. Plus, um, tomorrow it'll be up on YouTube, so you can see how I did the flesh on YouTube. I appreciate you coming by. Um, yeah, Wookie Gunner, I'm happy with how that pink blends down, man. Um, I'm glad you are, too. Um, I think that that ended up coming out nicely. Um, Yeah, what's going to make or break this, though, man, is going to be, like I said, I'm not worried about the feathers. Um, in fact, what I'm thinking to do for the feathers is kind of uh, kind of a bluish green like this. Um, we'll see. I haven't decided yet. I also might do two colors on the feathers instead of all the same color, but any Hulu. Um... Yeah, I'm happy with the flesh. I think the flesh is nice and blended, but still has the contrast. Um, purple looks interesting. Um, I think the hair, highlights of the hair um, that came out. Uh, this was a very productive, very productive session. Um, uh, any other last questions, uh, guys and gals, before I uh, bounce? Yeah, like I said, uh, what's good? What, ooh, Peacock, yeah. You know what, dude? That's a good... I or, or, I, say, I say dude. I say dude because even if you're um, not a male or identify as man, I, I say dude to everybody, sorry. But uh, yeah, I think Peacock could be interesting. I'm going to have to look at some reference photos. Um, the only fear I have about going Peacock on that is I don't want it to take over the model. Um, I still want the main interest of the model to be in the face and on the belly. Um, and I'm afraid if I get too fancy on the feathers, it might pull away from there. Um, but I don't think that's a bad uh, bad thing to look into, that's for sure. Um, but not too bad. We got a lot done in two hours. Um, she was basically washed with a little bit of base coat two hours ago. And uh, now we're, we are all done except for the uh, stockings and the, uh, the black... Um, the black gloves and the little black uh, lining on the skirt. Um, oh, you're a dude. Okay. All right. You're a guy dude. I couldn't assume that. Oh, you know what? Crap. You know what I didn't do? <laughs> didn't look up her skirt. Uh, she has... Oh, you know what? Let's knock out the lining on those stockings real quick. Let's make those yellow. And then uh, there's a little bit of flesh up there at the top there. So let's quickly... While, while my flesh paints are right here, let's just quickly knock those out. I did not even think to look up the skirt. So I'm going to grab some flesh here real quick. Let's do that. Let's get it the right color. I'm not going to shade it and spend a ton of time with it. I just want it so if you peek up there, it looks like flesh. All right, and then I want the top of these stockings to be the yellow. So let's grab the yellow. And let's define that out. Oh, 
I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, I'm glad that she looks good. Um, I'm definitely, definitely pleased. Um, I th I'm wondering if I can even bring those purple up, the contrast on that purple up a little bit more. Um, the camera. Yeah, I think I'm probably going to have to mess with that purple a little bit more. I'd want that contrast to stand out just a little bit more, but overall, she doesn't look too shabby. Um, all right. Well, those of you that stuck around to the end, I appreciate it. Special shout out uh, to Wookie Gunner. You were here the entire two hours, and I appreciate that. Um, if you missed the beginning of it, um, you can catch it up on YouTube tomorrow um, or catch it right here on Twitch if you're watching on Twitch. But um, thanks a ton, and we'll catch you next time. Don't forget, uh, Sunday is the 